So I'm gonna step back for a second and talk to you about where we start with search. You guys are with me so far, right? Nobody's tired or anything. So we start with your keyword strategy, right? Most people that don't know anything about SEO, at least they'll know about keywords, okay? Keywords set the stage. So we used to look at it, we used to scrape websites and get content data and say, this is how we're gonna start our search program, right? Then we got more sophisticated. We said, well, we're gonna do real like management consulting work and we're gonna do some industry research, company research and business research, right? And all those things are really important, but what's the most important is user intent. So that's why I'm gonna talk a lot about today about analytics and understanding and actually reviewing where are your site users coming from? What are, what are the queries, okay? What can we learn from a paid search campaign? And how can we put that into a search strategy? Because if you just say, well, you know what? I'm gonna focus on, like I have law firm clients. So I'm gonna focus on law firm New York City. Okay, that's nice. But that might be a highly competitive term. And if it's a highly competitive term, then it could take you six months, a year to rank, right? So what you wanna have with a proper SEO and keyword strategy is both a broad, narrow, and branded focus for keyword strategy. Okay. Um, so how do you do this, right? You could hire an SEO agency or you could try to DIY it, right? So there's awesome tools out there these days. Some are paid, some are free, okay? You could use things like Google Keyword Planner. Obviously, they're gonna give that to you. Why? Because they want you to spend money in AdWords. Um, it's free, you can use it. It can give you some great data. SEMrush, um, an awesome tool. I write for them, so I'm a little biased. SpyFu and like literally hundreds of other mm -hmm tools for you to do keyword research, word tracker, I mean, I can go on and on and on. But the point is, is if I went back to that last slide, I would say, well, are you guys looking at who your industry is, what your company is doing, who your target users are? I was talking to a woman right before I got up here who said, well, we have multiple audiences, right? We have multiple services. I mean, everybody has that today, right? So you need to have a proper strategy that's gonna align with each user type, and that's very important. Um, so I'm not gonna read off what's on this slide, but it's really important that you understand that you have a strategy that calls for reaching broad keywords as well as reaching what users are actually typing on an ongoing basis. On-site technical factors, as I mentioned, there's hundreds of on-site technical factors we can look at. Some are what I call old school that have been important in SEO for a long time that are still relevant today, like metadata, right? Some are fairly new like schema tags, right? So coding to get reviews and ratings. So I'm sure all of, you, all of you guys have a Google business listing, right? So somebody, I can type in your company and wherever you're physically located, that's gonna come up, right? So how many of you guys are taking advantage of tying that into Google Plus reviews, right? How many of you guys have a rating score on your website that's gonna pull up, so I go to organic and your description is gonna pull up a rating score. This is stuff that pulls from the website and this stuff is important. So. The point is, is that there are over 100 factors, so if your site is struggling today or you wanna get better rank, the first place you should actually look is on site. Do you have what's called um, WC3 validation errors there? Do you have duplicate content? I mean, there's hundreds of things there. So that's really important. Next would be quality link building, right? So as I mentioned what it used to be today and where it is, um, uh, where it used to be and what it is today, right? So. Quality and link building all starts with a strategy, right? So I kind of call it making friends on the internet. So what are the other sites out there that you can make friends with that tie into initiatives, right? So for me, I'm making friends with the Digital Mar Marketing World Forum Conference website. Why? It's complete, com all the content is completely aligned with what I do. That's why I wrote a blog post to lead up to this speech today, right? So who are your friends on the internet? What, have you, make it, have you made a list, right, of all the industry publications that you wanna write for, that you wanna get covered by, right? This stuff is critical. This is what we call online PR. Because at the end of the day, Google cares about sites that have um, citation and trust. You see that like highlighted there because it's very, very important. So it's not just about having high uh, quantity of links, it's about the quality of those links. And then I talked a bit about content before, right? And it's extremely important. But you can't just put out content because anybody that does content marketing in the room will agree with me, like we do. It's a lot of work and it's a lot of time, it's a lot of money, right? So you have to do it right and you have to do it with a strategy in mind. So this is an example of a content plan, just a simple snapshot of a content plan that I did for one of my former clients, Intercall, they're the largest um, audio conferencing company in the world. And what they 
wanted to focus on is building a market position about how utilizing their services provides more employee productivity, how utilizing their virtual services provides better mobility. So what do we do? We said, okay, so we're gonna do, we break it down in 30 day increments, and we said, okay, here's our editorial or content plan, and we said, theme for month one is productivity, right? And we don't want it to be stale and boring, right? So we're gonna have all different types of content about productivity. They're gonna come from subject matter experts within that company or within your companies. Or we might reach out to a ghostwriter, or we might reach out to the gentleman I just met today in the back of the room, right? Who talked to me about animation, right? Really important, so animation, video, graphics, right? So you can see on here this content plan calls for content every week that's tied into an SEO strategy and a keyword strategy, but it's different and it has to be measured. So there's all these different content types. I just highlighted kind of like what's what I know is moving forward today, and it's something that if you are not yet invested in, you should consider investing in it. I have worked with smaller clients where we've just done one lead video, and we can really use the hell out of it because we can leverage it, we can repurpose it, right? So you wanna start thinking about what rich media content are we gonna use? Are we using it today? Can we digitize old assets, right? So having a content plan means looking at your company and looking at what content did we create before, right? So I focus on B2B, so we look at white papers, PDFs, <coughs> Marcom materials, right? And pulling all that data in to digitize it and make it shareable. So original content is critical. I know I've beaten this like a dead horse, but it's really, really important. Why? Because companies that blog are indexed 434% higher than ones that don't. I mean, give me a break, right? You need to blog, you need to have original content, you need to have thought leaders. That's why, like Sean and these guys, we're talking about influencers today, right? Because people want to hear a voice that's interesting. People want original content that solidifies this company's an expert in X, Y, and Z, okay? So this is just a quick example of, of content on my site that has to do with LinkedIn, because I do LinkedIn training like every other day. So it's just an example, you know, of I don't just go and do a LinkedIn class, I do a press release, right? I do a multi-author blog, I'll do a recap, right? I'll pull in, I, there's a million things that I do in a laundry list like this, right? With content marketing. So how do you measure this? To me, this little ugly graphic, because I couldn't get a better one, it, it's just straight up marketing, right? How do we measure marketing effectiveness, like old school, how do we look at ad campaigns? It starts with reach, impressions, right? And leads to engagement. So everybody in this room should be interested in one thing, if they're here, it's about sales, right? It's about making money. That's what companies care about. I'm a business owner, I know a lot of business owners. That's what they care about. So all this marketing at the end of the day should feed engagement, so how do you do that? Well, you have to have things set up properly when it supports SEO, meaning reach. Okay, so I'm reaching out with content, maybe I'm funneling it through social, right? Maybe I'm funneling it through a paid search campaign. But that's nice, and I get these impressions, but that's not, that's a lightweight measurement, Moreover, I wanna look at things like act. So do people actually share that content? Easy way to measure this stuff, Google, Google Analytics. Google Analytics today has Google Analytics 360 for enterprise companies. It's fantastic. You can measure user intent and you can do user behavior. You can look at interest and all these great things, right? So act. Then next is convert. So conversion to me is extremely important, right? So somebody comes to my site, do they sign up? And are they the right person that signs up that lead form? Right? And do I get all that user data? And then how do I follow up with that to measure user intent? Finally, engagement, right? So engagement is then measuring that down to the CRM. So SEO is not a technical practice, right? It's a marketing practice today, and it needs to tie into sales. Marketing and sales have to work together to make SEO stronger. And I wanna emphasize that, because that's where I see a lot of companies fail in the world of search, and they get disgruntled. Um, content sharing. So. Just quickly to talk about this for a second. So you create all this content, it takes time, money, effort, and people. And then where do you share it, right? So everybody's different, every company is different. So and just to give you a quick idea, right? So with LinkedIn, for example, you know, which I can talk about all day, but I'm just gonna say one thing about it, right? It's the number one B2B social network. It's really intended for networking and sharing referrals and education, right? So if you've done a good job with LinkedIn, which has, guess what? Very high search index. So if you type in somebody's name, I don't know, what's your name? Jacob. Jacob. Very good name. So I type in Jacob, whatever his last name is in the audience, right? And in Google, right? If he doesn't have a website and he's not a major author and influencer, you may be, excuse me, you might be a celebrity and no idea who you are. 
Jacob is a biblical name, so good. But anyway, so so let's say I look up Jacob and the Bible comes up first, and you come up with the second. So Jacob comes up, right? And guess what? If he doesn't have all those things, his LinkedIn profile is going to come up. Okay? So that's search working right there. And if he's an executive of a company, and somebody's thinking, should I do business with Jacob? Oh man, his LinkedIn profile sucks. No. Right? Really important. My point is, is that you want to think of search in a broader perspective as a company, right? To have more people engaged with it. So LinkedIn is great for content sharing when it comes to referrals, when it comes to building up an individual's reputation. Whereas Facebook is more about personal sharing or employee development, right? Human resources, all these things. Because at the end of the day, when people Google anything about a company, you want to make sure you have a positive reputation, right? To me, that ties right in with search. Twitter, Instagram, I mean, you can read off of this, but the point is, is that content sharing, bookmarking, these should be daily activities of any company or agency that wants to do search for Thank you, Jacob, for being my audience, audience member. You only want Okay. So the next thing that I really want to harp on is website user experience, right? Website user experience is really important. Why? Because what happened is every quarter or so, and now almost every month, because we do SEO, right? Google's putting out some new update where they're saying that this is a penalty. Now we deem this as a penalty, right? Now we deem this as good, that type of thing. So one of the major factors in the last two years that's happened with search is that website user experience is extremely, extremely, times a million important, right? Any graphics, your design, your user experience. So if you don't have a user experience plan, if you haven't done real market research, if you haven't done focus groups, if you don't know what language to write in, if you don't know how to do SMO, socially, you know, optimize a site for social sharing, right? You're not doing yourself a good service when it comes to search. So this is the conversion point in your website, and your experience is hugely important. Matt Cutts, the head of Google's web spam team, said a couple years ago, basically, blah, 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 but what he really said is that, hey, you know what, guys? You know, webmasters? Social media and all these signals are becoming more important to search, right? The ones with the more open networks. At that time, they started to include Twitter's search algorithm into some of their real-time Google feeds, just for example, right? So what matters when it comes to social and search? What, what matters is reputation, right? So what's your reputation in social, your brand reputation, which these guys I'm sure we're talking a lot about today. Quality over quantity. So you know, how many of you guys, you know, have a network and you get a million posts from somebody and you don't really care about what they're posting about, right? Maybe they have, I mean, I'm, I'm the only person. Jacob, thank you. The only person I know in the audience. So, um, so no, I mean, it's true, right? But if you have a content plan and you, Jacob becomes a leader in, what do you do? Okay, so Jacob is a leader in search engine marketing. Good, so you can stand up here with me. So let's say we look up SEM and he comes up, right? So what is he writing about? What is he putting out there, right? So that's really, really important, okay? Um, commenting relevance, hugely important today, right, for social, okay? 